I want to talk about global settings for the game, which is found by pressing G. Um, first thing you have is the first board you would start on. That's when you press P to play the game. And if you don't want it to be your title screen, I want it to be board one. If I was going to have a border around the game, um, this would how you would set the color of the border with this option here. Um, here you have amount of lives to start with and the maximum amount of lives you can collect. And this would be your starting and maximum health. Uh, down here you have enemies, bullets hurt other enemies. That's pretty self-explanatory. That would be whether enemies can hurt one another when they're shooting. Um, clear messages and projectiles on exit means that when you leave a board and come back to it, whether the um, messages and any bullets and missiles and things like that that were on the board when you exited are still there or, or whether they're cleared. So if you select can only play a world from a swap world, that means you can't load up your world and play it normally. You can only play it through um, a command in robotic that's called swap world. Okay, here we have the options for the death board and the end game board. Um, you could select which board you want the player to travel to if he was to die, the XY coordinates he would start at on that screen, and uh, what happens when the player actually dies. You restart the same board or you teleport to the death board. If you change this option here from game over to teleport, when the game ends uh, with the robotic command end game, you would either um, stay in the position you're at and the game would just end, or you would teleport to the end game board, which you would select here. And here you would select the XY position you, the player would start at on the end game board. I highlighted edit characters in a pr previous tutorial. Actually, I think two previous tutorials. Um, you can change any uh, character for any object in the game basically through this uh, menu here. And there's quite a lot of um, different objects. You can change the uh, character and in some cases the color. This um, menu option here uh, allows you to go to a menu that uh, allows you to edit how much damage different objects in the game that hurt the player deal. And then this option is to um, edit the global robot. The global robot is, um, I guess you could think of it as the god robot because it is um, present on every board, but you cannot see it. Um, it, it, it. It always exists, and its program, if you choose to have a program in the global robot, is always running. Um, it's, it's a unique robot from the rest in that um, every other robot in the game is only active and running when you're on the board that that robot is on. But the global robot uh, is always there. It always exists in the background. You can't see it because it doesn't have a physical presence on any board, but it's always um, present on every board. If you press I, you'll bring up board settings. That's where we first uh, named the board. Um, there's, so there's a number of options here you can try out and switch, and they're all pretty self-explanatory for the most part. Um, this is whether explosions turn to just uh, blackness or gray ash or whether they actually start on fire. Um, this option is whether you can save or not on the board you're at on. And this option is t whether you want to have an overlay on the board or not. And I'll explain what overlay is in an upcoming tutorial. I won't deal with that now. This option here is to set a time limit for the board you're on. So if you want to have a, a puzzle that has to be completed in a certain amount of time, you would uh, just select your time limit here. And if the timer runs out, you die. And I think you start the board over with the timer reset to its original time. So the great thing about Megazooks is you can create a game that's as simple or as complex as you like, and it's very 
um, quick and easy to churn out a little game. There are actually um, competitions called Day of Zooks that are, um, well, they're competitions to see if you can create a game in one day, basically. So it's like a 24-hour competition where you try and try and uh, churn out a game that's playable at the end. And um, so you can easily make a game in one day, especially if you plan it out ahead of time. Um, but it can also take years to complete games if you really are trying to produce something big. Um, it's it's many times easier if you have help, but if you're doing it alone, uh, it can take uh, a very, very, very long time to make a game that's very high caliber. Um, I would I would warn against making your game too complex. Um, probably a year would be the longest amount of time you ever want to take to complete an entire game. Um, beyond that, you kind of lose focus and you tend to lose um, enthusiasm eventually and just stop working on the game altogether at some point. Even though at the beginning of the project it, it seemed like a great idea, it just becomes um, a lot of work and it stops feeling worth it after a while at some point to, to truly try and um, complete a game. You, you sort of lose motivation and then you just sort of stop working on it altogether at some point. So I would say if you set out to make a really complex, awesome game, um, a year would be a good time frame to try and keep that game. Um, if you ever have played Minecraft or Little Big Planet, then you, you, you understand how fun it can be to, um, you know, build and create your own world to play in. But, um, yeah, I would just keep in mind the, um, the amount of time that it can take to produce something like that.